Well, in the beginning, it was uh, it was just um, a total dream come true. Like it was everything that I'd ever wanted, um, and I couldn't have been more grateful. But there was always this um, <laughs> there was always this like really funny like sense of like doom on the horizon. I think it like has something to do with maybe how I was raised. But like um, there was I I always felt like I think a lot of people enter pro skating and they're like they they're really like oh wow this is it I, I made it and I don't have to think about anything else ever again I was never like that I kind of was just always like a little bit stressed out about like what I was going to do when I wasn't a pro skater but but totally enjoying it at the same time just being like wow I mean like I was just completely autonomous like getting paid as a in high school you know what I mean like it was insane I I, I really did appreciate like how much freedom it gave me um it just gave me total all, all i could make all the choices by myself all of a sudden it was like such a gift that's also a curse but it was mostly a gift and it was just you know and it was also just so amazing my job was just to wake up every day and try to be better at skating which i just like liked anyways so i mean really can't complain about that part um but you know, there's there's so many sides to being a, a pro skater, there, and everyone has a different experience. But you know, uh, I mean, so much could be said about what it's like growing up as a pro skater. But it's uh, it's definitely like for me because I cared about it a lot. It was very challenging most of the time. Uh, but there was always I I was always grateful and I had a good time. But so you had like a conscious idea that like maybe one day this would end. Yeah, I mean, it was more than a conscious idea. It was like just this sort of very, very real inevitable thing. And I don't think that's too hard to swallow. Like, it's like, yeah, this is going to end. And um, and also, you know, my parents were, were not very, like, supportive of the idea of, like, not going to college and, like, just going for this whole skateboarding thing. It was, v it was very foreign to them. And I think they kind of, like... Inst I mean, growing up with them, they really instilled like a like uh, this fear inside of me that like if you don't have shit figured out, you're gonna be fucked. You know what I mean? So um, I just always had that inside, and I think that's I think like in a way that sort of pushed me to be like as like successful as I possibly could. It's just um, like as a skateboarder, um, uh, because there was a, there's just such a fear of um, like if you don't if you don't make it you know like uh i also i also grew up with this i like the like the it's like this is cultural but like if like like receiving love is about accomplishment you know what i mean like you have to accomplish things and we'll love you that's not like literally true but in a way it is in in my culture so I think like that really unconsciously applied to how I skated too. It's just, like, you have to like, you have to be absolutely as good as you possibly can be. Um, or, or you won't get what you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I relate to that. I relate to that a lot, honestly. Um, and I think about that a lot in my, my current day life. Um, because I kind of, kind of came up with a similar thought process because of the way my parents would talk and not to say that that's necessarily wrong. And I feel like, um, at least speaking from my perspective and what happened to me, um, you know, parents just, especially when they come from a different country and they're really struggling mad hard to, to make a life for you, they just want the best for you. So it's like, am I going to approach this with a plan or no plan? Of course, they're going to say, well, approach it with a plan. They're not just going to be like, don't approach it with a plan. However, um, as I've talked to more people and just like growing up a little bit more, I realized that some of the illest shit that's ever happened happens with, uh, organicness and with no plan and it honestly really fills me with a sense of hope and inspiration when i hear about sick things that went down and were kind of legendary or even just sick things sick things in general and they worked out in the end which to me was like that could never happen unless you have a plan and i still <laughs> hold on to that a lot yeah like sci-fi like starting off with no plan and it's just kind of like to make things and see what happens you know a part of me would be like how are you ever going to do that you got to have to you got to have to 
you're going to need a crazy plan and you're going to have to, what, what about a month from now? What are you going to make these hats, give them to people? And then what happens a month from now? Like, yeah. And then what you just spent some couple hundred bucks and you know, but it doesn't have to be that way. And when I hear that it, um, it gets me pretty pumped. No, definitely. But I'll also say that like none of this stuff that I ever did, I did alone. I did by myself. Like, like people, people like, Oh, sci-fi, how'd you do it? Like blah, blah, blah. blah. And I'm just like, well, I mean, you have to, you have to remember, like, I was like, I was, I was skateboarding for like, I was like a pro skater for like 20 years. Like a lot of people, like a lot of skaters, like, like know who I am. So it, there's like a built in audience to sci-fi. So like people will always ask me like, wow, like how'd you start your, your business and stuff? And I'm like, well, I mean, like I, I base it on my life. Like I, like I have an advantage over most people in, in this, like, in this, like, you know, ecosystem of skateboarding, you know? So I always try to like, always point that out because like, I didn't just like start a business with nothing. I, I, I had this whole like history, yeah. like involved with it. But what you said about like, yeah, like just, just sort of like, um, like, uh, trusting your intuition and like taking risk. I think we'll always um, get the best results. Sometimes it, it won't, you know, like you'll like, you shouldn't count on that, but like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, like it's important to, to fucking go for it. Like that's the only, like, like scared money don't make money. Like it's like the same thing. It's just like, you have to take a big risk if you want like a big reward. And sometimes you're going to like you, it won't, it won't always work out. Like sometimes it, it just won't, but, um, but it is like important that you that you try and that you that you go for it and that you're prepared to to fail i think that's like a huge part of um like what i've learned over the years is just like um sort of managing failure um whether it's like day to day or like big um it's i think it's just healthy to um to always like remember that yeah i mean luckily now Luckily now, like you can with an Instagram account, you can do so much. And then like a simple Shopify account, you can do so much. If you're hyped on some shit, you can make some shit. Um, I feel like the barrier to entry is is more open than it's probably is lower than it's probably ever been before in the history of humanity. Like we're, li we're living in a pretty sick time at the end of the day, like social media has a lot of has a lot of stuff that comes with it. It's like yin yang and everything, though. And there's going to be shit that comes with it. But it, like it gives it does inevitably like undoubtedly give you as the user a lot of power it's just a tool that you can use for essentially whatever you, you could use a hammer for a million things you know yeah i mean it's it's literally the tool that i use to speak to customers you know like and to speak to like um people who like are interested in what i'm doing um and yeah it's uh I mean, it's good and bad. It's it's really you have to you just have to like, you just have to like zoom out and and manage like all the negative aspects of this tool because it's just it at the end of the day it's a technology we control it we decide whether we want to pay attention to it or not. But um, yeah, it's. But the what you said about um, like entering this world, uh, like if you want to like make something, uh. Yeah, like I grew up in a time where this, this this stuff didn't exist and you really needed to count on like like say if you want to skate start a skateboard company in like 1995. Like you need you need like like from what I from what I gathered at that time it's just like okay, well, you need to go to like a distribution company and they they are going to they're going to do everything for you and they're going to take like almost everything from you. You know, like I just thought like oh, that's just how these things work. And with the with like the with like the internet and everything like man a, a kid a kid at stoner park can start a company on his phone in like an hour you know what i mean it's pretty crazy and i think that's really cool but um it also sort of adds to sort of um the static in our li like th just just the the availability of everything like all the information in the world all the time i think is i don't know it's it's kind of creepy and it definitely needs to be like you need to like i don't know i think a lot of people should appreciate 
like the power that they're like fucking with you know what yeah I mean? like, no, no it, doubt. like it's like uh i don't know it's crazy i'm glad i lived in a time where it didn't exist because like i can really because people talk shit about you know like instagram all this other they like talk about it but i'm like i i can really appreciate it because i can really see the see like what like an incredible tool it is yeah. even even though it's like straight up evil 